What's going on, everybody? Anthony Servino here with the Face Off Sports Network with my top waiver wire pickups for NFL Week 5. Let's get right into it with Kareem Hunt. He's my top waiver wire pickup, as he should be. Right now, it looks like Kareem Hunt is the unquestioned running back one for the Kansas City Chiefs. In his first action this season, he led all running backs with 25 snaps. But we do have to say that Samaj P. Run also had 24 snaps. Carson Steele looks like the odd man out playing only 11 snaps. So why do I believe Kareem Hunt's the guy? Well, Kareem Hunt managed 16 touches, 14 carries, two receptions, uh, 69 yards rushing, 16 receiving yards. He did not score. That touchdown actually went to P. Ryan. Now, P. Ryan, despite getting the aforementioned 24 snaps, he only had five rushing attempts, but he did score that touchdown. So when it comes to touches, and that's what we want to chase in fantasy football, we want to chase volume. We want to chase opportunity. We believe those are going to Kareem Hunt. And another note, I did say Kareem Hunt did catch two passes. He had three targets. P. Ryan, who we, be who we believe was brought on to be the receiving back, did not receive a single target in week four against the Chargers. So Kareem Hunt, he is absolutely positively a must-add player in fantasy football, no matter the formats. Let's go to my next guy, and that's Rico Dowdle, rostered in 48% of leagues. Normally, I don't like talking about players rostered uh, in this many leagues, but in this case, I think we need to talk about Rico Dowdle because of Ezekiel Elliott. And I was really high on Elliott coming in, but let's face it, Zeke's washed. And I hate saying it, yeah, Zeke might get some goal line run here and there, but right now, this is clearly Rico Dowdle's backfield, back-to-back -back games. Now, first two games of the year, Rico, Zeke, they were relatively close in snaps. The past two games, it was not. Rico against Baltimore, 32-14. Last week against the Giants, 24-9. Rico Dowdle is dominating the snap share right now. He is dominating the touches uh, best game of the year so far for Rico against the Giants, 11 for 46 on the ground. Uh, he caught his only target for a 15-yard touchdown. Uh, even the two weeks before, Rico had five targets in each game. We are seeing the snap share go up. We are seeing the touches go up. And I don't think Rico is ever going to be a world beater, right? Uh, but right now, he's the best on a very poor backfield for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, are there things we can uh, we can dig into? The fact that the Cowboys opened this year with two rookies on the offensive line. If these rookies can develop, we know that this offensive line in Dallas, they're perennially a good, a perennially a good unit. And, and maybe by midseason, everything gels and there's a greater semblance of a running game, which benefits Rico Dowdle. But since there's nobody else, unless they try Dalvin Cook, Rico should be rostered everywhere and he should be viewed a, a high floor flex play moving forward. Let's go to my next running back. We should be picking up on waivers, Roshan Johnson. Now, Roshan, we, we knew the rumors going into this week. Roshan Johnson was going to get more opportunity because in week three, seeing his first action of the year, eight for 30 on the ground, four or five targets for 32 yards. He was more productive than, than, than DeAndre Swift uh, has been all year. Well, going into week four against the Rams, things change. DeAndre Swift, looked like a superstar. He looked like the guy that the Bears paid in free agency. And you know, this is kind of how fantasy football works. When you least expect it, when it looked like when it looks like he, the guy's going to lose his job, the guy pops in a good matchup. DeAndre Swift, after giving us under 8.2 PPR points 
through the first three games of the year. He goes off 16 for 93 on the ground for it with a touchdown, catches all seven targets for 72 yards. Everything is great. Everything's dandy for DeAndre Swift, but Roshan is still going to be used. Now, Roshan only played 18 snaps to Swift's 36, but within those 18 snaps, he carried the ball seven times for 26 yards and a touchdown. In fact, he has now received a carry inside the five-yard line in back-to-back games and a total of four red zone touches to uh, in each of the past two games. So there is a role here. He's a bigger back. He's a in-between-the-tackles runner. They're probably going to use him a lot more on the goal line because he brings a different skill set than, than DeAndre Swift. In fact, despite seeing all of those touches last week, DeAndre Swift only had one red zone carry and three red zone carries collectively in 2024 through four games. So if there is a defined role for Roshan, he's going to be the goal line back in a short yardage back. And to me, he should be rostered for that alone because this Bears offense, as Caleb Williams gets acclimated and grows and as this thing grows, that there's enough firepower for this thing to click and pop and sizzle. And these matchups upcoming from weeks five to week 11, the Bears get all bottom 16 matchups when it comes to Fantasy running back points allowed. Very easy matchups. But if we really look in the next few games, week five, Carolina, the second easiest matchups. Fantasy points allowed the running backs. Week six, Jacksonville, they're 26. By week, coming out of by Washington, 22nd. Arizona, week nine, 28th. There is more than enough room for both DeAndre Swift and Roshan Johnson to give us pretty damn good fantasy production. Let's go to the wide receiver position. And my number one ad, Dontavian Wicks. Now, we also have to bring up Romeo Dubs. We also have to bring up the fact that Christian Watson, he's going to miss a little bit of time with a high ankle injury. So what does that mean? Who do we want to pick up? But let's start with Romeo Dubs because Romeo Dubs on the season so far leads all Packers wide receivers when it comes to snap count by a wide margin. He's played 209 snaps, Jaden Reed 171, Wicks 144 so far. That's a wide margin differential. Now, what don't I like about Romeo Dubs? Well, the fact that He's not getting a ton of targets despite playing that many snaps. He's not the most targeted player on this team. We know that the opportunity share goes to Jaden Reed. In fact, Romeo Dubs only 17.1% of the team targets so far. Whereas Dontavian Wicks, who's seeing the third few or the third most snaps, he has an 18.8% target share. Dontavian Wicks, 14.2 yards average depth per target using Rotowire tools. That is 88th percentile. Uh, Wicks, 95th percentile when it comes to average yards per route run at 3.25. And in fact, Dontavian Wicks, 100th percentile when it comes to a 68.8% uh, share when it comes to targeted on route. So 68.8% of the time, Dontavian Wicks is targeted on a route that he is running. These metrics tell me to pick up Dontavian Wicks over Romeo Dubs. Romeo Dubs has yet to give us more than nine PPR points in a single week. Meanwhile, Wicks, when he gets the opportunity, he has been productive. Week two against Indy, he catches three or four targets for 26 in the touchdown. And that was obviously without Jordan Love. Take that for what you will. But last week against Minnesota, because Christian Watson, he got banged up early. He only played nine offensive snaps last week. It was the Wick show. Caught five of a massive 13 targets for 78 yards and two touchdowns. He's more explosive. He has a 
clear rapport with Jordan Love. And even going back to last year, this is why everybody loved Wicks this offseason. People were drafting Wicks fairly high for a team's wide receiver four because anytime his number was called, anytime he had that opportunity last year, Wicks showed up and he popped and he sizzled. And we saw that once again this week. So my priority is Wicks first, Romeo Dubs second. Let's go to another wide receiver. I absolutely love that's Wandell Robinson, folks. What are we doing here? I feel like I'm on. I, I, I talk about Wandell every freaking week with this waiver wire show, but nobody's picking him up. Wandell Robinson, folks, look at the numbers. Yes, Malik Neighbors, the unquestioned wide receiver one of New York, as he should be. But Wandale Robinson should be rostered everywhere, mostly PPR scoring for Massive Fantasy. Wandale, every game this year, at least 9.8 PPR points. In those other three games where he's given us more, 11.8, 13.1, 18.1 season high last week against Dallas. He's been targeted at least eight times in three out of four games. The only game where he didn't give us more than four targets in week two against Washington, he scores a touchdown uh, and gives us the 9.8 PPR points, which is a season low. Two of those four games this year, 12 and 14 targets. He is seeing a massive target share, and he is cashing in on those targets. In fact, Wandale's 94th percentile seeing 27.9% of his team targets. He is targeted on 30.4% of routes that he is running, which is 89th percentile. Not a great A dot, not a great yak, but he's being used and he's being targeted. And in PPR, that means you have a high floor player. And not only should he be rostered, you can make the case he should be in your flex spot or a wide receiver three spot on a weak to week basis. Let's move on with Xavier Leggett. Now, Leggett is now probably going to be a thing, right? Adam Thielen, done. He's sidelined. And in his first real action of the year, right, uh, Leggett, 60 snaps played, which was not only a team high last week, but a season high for himself. He gets targeted 10 times. He rushes two times. So, Catches six for 66 and a touchdown on those 10 targets. Rushes twice for 10 yards. That's 76 total yards on eight total touches. He looks explosive. This is the second time he saw at least seven targets in the game. Remember in week one, he had a decent target volume uh, with Bryce Young. But now that Andy Dalton is in the mix and they got Deontay Johnson going and they got the ground game going with Chuba Hubbard, you're seeing why I was slowly buying into this Panthers offense. It wasn't a Panthers personnel thing. It was a Bryce Young thing. And with a competent Andy Dalton, this offense starting to click. They upgraded the interior offensive line. It must have said it all offseason that the Panthers prioritized and upgraded the O-line. They want to run the ball. They want to protect the quarterback so they can move the football out of their hand. They don't want to get sacked. Bryce Young. And we are now seeing that. And with Deontay Johnson really stepping up and playing sensational football, he's going to command the double coverage. He's going to demand the enemy defensive coordinator's attention. And somebody like Xavier Leggett, he's going to eat. And, and we saw that a little bit last week. And these matchups aren't always good. Like next week in Chicago, I don't know if I love Xavier Leggett. We're like, we're not putting him in our lineup. We're going to pick him up and stash him. Because the matchups are eventually going to open up teams like Washington on a horizon, teams like Philly on a horizon. So we are certainly buying into players like Xavier Leggett. Let's go to another wide receiver. And this one's Josh Downs. And our guy on the face-off uh, on our live show, if you see him on videos, Pete Terranova, Supernova. Uh, he was really in on downs. I was also in on downs this offseason. Even with the injury, we both believed, hey, this guy's going to come back. He's a natural slot player in this offense. And it didn't take long. 
Josh Downs, upon his return last week, played eighty, uh, played thirty-one snaps, gets five targets, catches three for twenty-two. That was with Anthony Richardson. We know Anthony Richardson gets banged up, leaves the game last week. In comes Joe Flacco. Well, the slot receiver from Joe Flacco gets nine targets, eight for 82 and a touchdown, 22.2 PPR points. A sensational game out of Josh Downs, and I don't think he's over yet. Now, am I worried that if Anthony Richardson plays this week, we're going to see a regression from Josh Downs, of course, because, and I was in on Anthony Richardson, and I'm still in to an extent on Anthony Richardson, but it does not look good. He has to figure out how to be a better decision maker and thrower of the football. But Josh Downs, he needs to be picked up and stashed if you don't have him yet and he's available in your league. If you're telling me next week Jacksonville Jaguars on the slate, one of the worst defenses in the NFL at defending enemy wide receivers, they're 28th. If the perfect storm happens, you're going to say, Anthony, what's the perfect storm? Joe Flacco starts. You got the great matchup. Josh Downs could potentially really pay dividends for your fantasy football team if you use him in a flex spot. But that's only if Joe Flacco ends up starting. We'll talk about why in a few minutes. Let's go to another receiver, Jerry Judy. And Jerry Judy, uh, you know, 48% rostered. He's another guy like Rico Dowdle. Like, I don't like talking about guys rostered. Uh, at this high of a rate, but Jerry Judy should be rostered more. Since coming to the Browns, Jerry Judy, you can make the case he's playing the best football of his career, at least for fantasy, the consistency, three out of four games this year, at least 11 and a half PPR points. He's getting receptions. He's getting yards. Uh, he's getting targets. Uh, you know, target share this year, eight, seven, eight, six, seven, nine. Those are how much he was targeted in the first four games of the year. So three games over seven targets, two games over eight targets. Not a lot of red zone work, uh, which is a little bit concerning. Only three red zone targets, but that's not really what Jerry Judy does best. He's really the over-the-top big play guy. Uh, but this is a work in progress. I, I, this this entire offense, Deshaun's starting to play better. Uh, I, I think this offense in Cleveland is rising. And if, when, and I think it's going to be soon, Nick Chubb comes back, they're going to get a, a, a big boast in the running game. And that's going to open up the pass. We know how football works. It's worked the same way for 30, uh, 40, 50 years. So Jerry Judy, pick him up, get ahead of the market. Because as long as he stays healthy and continues to develop the rapport with, with, with Watson, I, I think Judy could potentially really pop on your fantasy teams. He has some outstanding matchups upcoming. Washington, Philly, uh, both bottom four matchups. And then week seven uh, after the Cincy game, he gets Baltimore. They're, they're 25th. So really nice upcoming matchups for Jerry Judy, and they are using him over the top, 33.6% of the team air yards, um, 86.5 air yards per game, 21% target share, and 22.9% uh, rate when it comes to targeted on routes he is running. I'm picking up, and you should too, Jerry Judy. Let's start winding down Justin Fields, the quarterback position, and this is another guy's you should have gotten ahead of the market when I told you to last week because it's coming and it came in Justin Fields, 37.1 quarterback fantasy points, depending on where you play week three, 22.9. This after back-to-back -back games where they're winning and Justin Fields is playing game manager. That is no longer the case. Now they did lose to the Colts, but it was not Justin Fields fault. Justin Fields, uh, did lose a fumble, no picks. Like they, they are winning games because of Justin Fields because he's not making mistakes. And I'm not going to put this loss last week on Justin Fields. And I don't think the Steelers should either. And I don't think Justin Fields' job is on the line. Like I don't think he should be worried about Russell Wilson. Last week, Justin Fields played sensational game of football, 312 yards passing with a touchdown, 9.2. Yards per attempt, five passes, uh, five pass plays that went over 20 yards. Even 
uh, ran the ball 10 times for 55 yards and two scores. He has now scored a rushing touchdown in back-to-back games. He has thrown at least one passing touchdown on three straight games. Once again, only one interception on the year, and he's only lost one fumble on the year. This is the best version we have ever seen when it comes to winning football games and playing good football from Justin Fields. And I think this is going to continue. I think he's getting comfortable with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They certainly have the weapons. Najee, Pickens, Fryer, Muth, they have enough for Justin Fields to not only thrive as an NFL quarterback, but in fantasy football as well. We know what we're going to get out of him, and he should be rostered everywhere, especially if the quarterback you drafted, like somebody like Mahomes, if you have Fields, you're in good shape because you can plug and play Fields. Until Mahomes gets back on track this upcoming game, Justin Fields, they get Dallas. I know it was with the Bears a couple of years ago, but the last time Justin Fields played the Cowboys, and yes, it was a loss, but Justin Fields went absolutely crazy on the Cowboys. Let's go to my final pickup. That's Tucker Kraft at the tight end position. Now, coming into the year, we knew the deal. It was supposed to be Musgrave over Kraft, but it looks like Kraft is the tight end to want in fantasy. By far, he is dominating snap share. 210 snaps played this year to Musgraves 102. In fact, Kraft last week doubled, uh, more than doubled Musgraves, 63 to 25. And that's really been the case for the most of the season. Kraft has been dominating snap share. Now, he hasn't been targeted a lot. Now, granted, uh, for two games, there was Malik Willis. This offense wasn't what it should have been. But if we go off of last week against Minnesota, Tucker Kraft caught six of nine targets for 53 yards and a touchdown, 17.3 PPR points, and that's even increasing in a tight end premium lead. Uh, Two targets inside the red zone. And what's important here is that the two games that Jordan Love has played with Tucker Kraft week one, week four, Kraft was targeted in the red zone twice. In each game. So don't count on Musgrave. Musgrave at this point, you can't hold him. You're dropping him. Uh, In in most, you know, obviously if you have a 20 man bench, you can hold him, but that's not the case for most of us. We're dropping Musgrave if he's even rostered and he should not be. And the guy you want in this tight end room uh, is Tucker Kraft, you know, uh, of qualifying tight ends, a 3.17 average yards per route run of qualifying tight ends. Kraft is being targeted on 41.5% of routes he is running, um, 9.5 yards average after catch, which is 100 percentile amongst qualifying tight ends using the tools at rotowire.com. That's going to do it for today's show. Remember, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the alert icon. So you can be notified anytime we are live to answer your questions or drop more content just like this. And after uh, if you're done watching, if you have a waiver wire question or a start sick question, ask it in the comments. Myself or one of us from the Face Off Sports Network staff will get back to you as soon as we can. Until next time, I'm Anthony Servino. This is the Face Off Sports Network. We'll see you.